One of the biggest opportunities in being a photographer are engagement shoots. Why? Because people are eventually gonna get married, which means they need to get engaged, which means they need photos. I got three tips. You coming with me. We're gonna shoot some people. Let's get it. Hey, what's up? I'm Omar Takori and this channel is all about helping you take better photos. So if you're interested in that, make sure to subscribe and also hit that bell if you wanna be notified. I try to post videos on a weekly basis. I do my best. I actually am kinda of getting good at it, not really. Also, make sure to check out the description for links to my gear, uh, my website, my Instagram, hit me up on Instagram, um, as well as my presets. All the images you'll see in this video are edited with my presets and I put them up for sale for very inexpensive. But let's get into the tips. So one of my favorite things to shoot are couples in general. Uh, and that may go for an engagement session or a wedding uh, day or even 10 years after a marriage and I'm just, they want to get some pictures done. Uh, I just love capturing emotion and it's kind of hard to capture emotion just with a, you know, portrait photography. Obviously you can, but there's just something about the connection of two people and capturing that for them. And then you're giving them these images of them and they get to be like, yo, this is our love story. Love couples, I just love them. And with that being said, that just poses that there is a huge opportunity for this. You know, um, I think the one opportunity is yes, people are always gonna get engaged, but typically when you can lock in an engagement session, what can happen is you'll probably get chosen to be their wedding photographer if you do a good job. And so I'm gonna help you do a good job. And so here are three tips real quick before you're gonna come with me and I'm gonna show you a little sum sum and give you some tips as I'm shooting a couple up in the mountains. I got three tips for you. They all start with C, and you could probably use them for anything photography. The first thing I got for you is comfort. Try your best not to take pictures of uncomfortable people. You know, if you, if you have someone sit, and maybe it's just hard for them to sit and get into a certain position, and they're trying to hold it up, and then here you go just trying to take pictures, and they're just trying to hold their breath and look all good and stuff, it, it won't help your image. So uh, your best bet is to just let them find that comfortable position. If you have a pose, by all means, get him into that pose, but then, and then you just allow them to say, just get comfortable. That's usually a phrase I use many times when I get him in a position. One, one example was uh, I had Adrian, the guy I'm gonna shoot later in this video, uh, put his arm around his girlfriend and, or his fiance and then have her hold on. And his arm was like up her neck, his clothing was off, and then he was just trying to just hold the position. But I was like, dude, just relax the arm, bring it down. Hey, wit, just gently hold on to him. You guys, just get comfortable. And a lot of the times, people, they do. You know, when you ask them to just get comfortable, they do. And so comfort is a huge thing. Don't take pictures of uncomfortable people. It won't come out good. The next thing is clothing. Um, today with photography and Instagram and everyone trying to be their best photographer, which is awesome, let's do it, um, is clothing. I think uh, if you can put in some extra effort in helping them find the right colors, uh, and clothing to wear. I guess this kind of goes with shooting someone uncomfortable or more or less just um, you don't want someone to get lost in the shot. Let's say they're in the, uh, the desert, don't have them wear tan. If they're in the desert, have them wear black or blue. Uh, in this instance, in the, in the, in, at the Joshua Tree, it's not Joshua Tree Park, but it was like a Joshua Tree area. You know, Adrian was wearing denim and Whitney was wearing black, which looked really good against the tan and the greens and the, and the browns. Um, but you don't wanna wear the same color as your background. If you want colors to pop, make sure you're not shooting in too, too much colorful places. Another thing is not to be cheesy or quintessential. For instance, if you're shooting a couple in like woods, don't have the guy wear red plaid. That's a lumberjack's outfit, especially when you're in the woods. There's just some things to take into consideration. And so to help with that, you know, maybe you're not the best person at picking out colors and color schemes. I'm not, to be honest with you. However, when they ask me, I do just give my like personal honest opinion. However, Pinterest, Pinterest is one of my favorite platforms and search engines to use uh, before I go into a shoot to get an idea of clothing, to get an idea of poses, location, and uh, things like that. You can see how certain colors look in certain situations. So just like use your best judgment and I would just reference, you know, if you have a reference, you can actually have something to go off of and proof that this would look good in a photo shoot. Number three in the last C is don't compromise. Especially when you're shooting engagement sessions, um, these are a big deal. You know, the, they'll, you'll, they'll never do another engagement session and so you're capturing an essence in their relationship, a season that they're only experiencing for a short amount of time and you get to do that. So I think to not compromise your images, if you think you can get the shot, 
make sure you get the shot. Uh, there are times where, you know, maybe, maybe they feel drowned out or uh, more or less like maybe they're over this location or they're over this. But if you feel like there's like a magical shot, don't just let it go to waste. Um, a lot of like the greatest shots I've ever taken have come toward the end of my photo shoots. And it's because I just, I see something and I'm like, let's try that out. Can you guys stand there real quick? I'm sorry, I promise, this is my last image. And then I take that picture and then boom, it's just magic. Um, not saying every time, but within photo shoots, I, I, I try my best not to compromise. If I got my clients in a good spot and I'm shooting them, and I don't feel like I got the shot, I want to make sure I do. And if the shot's not there, by all means, move on. But I think, I'll just show an example of one. The, uh, this couple, and I'll show part two when we get into the woods in another video. However, uh, this image right here, I think is one of my favorite pictures I took of 2017. And this was at the end of our shoot. The sun was completely gone, as far so much so that the moon was out, ready to go. And I just saw this image while they were walking behind me while we were walking back to the car. I was like, can you guys just cuddle up real quick, get comfortable, put on those clothes. No, I'm just kidding, I didn't say that. They weren't naked. And then I just shot this image, and then it just came out so awesome. I had the, the shot of where the moon is in focus, and then I unfocused, or and then I focused on the couple. It just like a killer shot just because I felt it in my instinct. And I think that's one thing to always keep into mind is that these people trust you to take their photos. So take pride in that and be like, I'm gonna get you the freshest shots out here. So let's do a recap of the three C's. Number one, comfort. Don't take pictures of people who are uncomfortable. Just don't do it. Number two, clothes. Take into consideration colors. Take into consideration how clothes fit on people, the location and how that ties in with the colors, aesthetic, all that awesome stuff. And number three is do not compromise. Get the shot you wanna get. They trust you. Now let's get into it. Photo shoot I just recently did with some of the homies. Um, I apologize in advance for the shaky footage. My wife Amanda tried to do her best. Um, nonetheless, I think you can find a lot of value out this video. If you do, make sure to uh, hit that like button. Comment if you have a question during the video. I'll do my best to answer it as much as I can. I'm on here. And check out the presets as well. I'll see you at the end of the video. Let's go. So we are out here at Mount Charleston in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Not really not Las Vegas, Nevada. It's Mount Charleston, Nevada, I guess. But what, here's a little quick tip. I just, we, on your way up to the mountain, we found some Joshua trees. And it's almost like on our way to like the main place, we're getting another look, which is actually a good use of time. So just think of that, like don't be afraid that if you guys are driving together or something, you should be like, hey, I actually like how this looks. Let's stop here, shoot it real quick. And then, so that's what we're doing. A couple Joshua trees vibes. They're already like in a position to like freaking get a shot. This is the easy stuff, man, let's go. I'm shooting on a neutral. So obviously when you're shooting neutral and raw, it gives you a lot more stuff to play with in post. And um, just in case you underexpose by accident. And my f-stop is 2.0, um, ISO is as low as possible. And I'm just shooting them, chill. This is really cool. Single spot autofocus with my, my thing in the center, my focus point in the center. And like shots like this, so like they're posed really cool but you can just let them stay there, shoot portrait, shoot, move around, um, tell them to engage. Like Adrian, yeah, there you go. Like look at each other, there you go. You can get a smile. Oh, they kiss without even asking that. Freaky. I'm just kidding. I also, uh, I like to encourage like shots that, you know, typically you don't post your face in your home. That's kind of weird. I mean, a lot of people do it, but I like getting them out of focus, focusing on a Joshua tree. Um, all right, now you guys face me. And like, again, just like cuddle up and, and be with each other. I'm gonna go super far back and you guys just hang there. So we're gonna, I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna try to get this rock. That'll be like the main shot or like the main piece of this. So right now you can see like the rock, they're, they're just cuddling up and I'm again, focus point. So when you're doing these type of shots where you have like a big thing to be the main uh, piece of the image, however you still have like your a couple or person you're shooting, 
I think it's just awesome to try different compositions of the shot, whether it's the couple on the far right or they're in the center, um, showing a little more sky and then also turning your camera landscape and just getting different images in the same spot. And you know, I love moving around, but sometimes just in the same spot, you can get so many pictures. And the infamous creeper shot, and that is when you're using an object or a subject uh, in front of your subject and you you know put it out of focus shooting at low apertures I think it makes for very dynamic images and also gives some depth to your image and so make sure to try that whenever you can if you see a bush or a tree try to shoot through it and shoot your subjects uh, every time I try to shoot moving subjects and want to get them in, sh in focus I make my focus area wide that's what I'm doing on my camera now making my focus area wide and my focus mode uh, in uh, continuous and that allows me to just lock on them and while they move I'm able to get them in sharp focus and then just shoot different compositions in this way and also in post you can also crop images but it all starts with trying to get them in tack sharp focus how about Adrian switch sides uh, Adrian right hand back left with knee left hand up forward that way their bodies are open you see me in the image so this way their bodies are both facing me. Watch Whitney hold them with your right hand. You see how she naturally like covered up her outfit. So this way it's like he's leading her but they're showing them their, their outfits. It's a cool uh, little life hack. Um, all right, so just just look forward and like walk, walk like straight up. There you go, go ahead. Look back at her. sometimes I get the sun kind of just coming in and we kind of life hacked a sunset because we're using this rock as a place of the sun to come and peak and usually peak shots uh, look pretty cool so Adrian step like to your left kind of very okay, perfect and now look back at me or look back at Whitney so, yep there you go just look at back here focusing on his eye first and then I'm framing the shot so the sun could come in Again, just I'm using the bush to uh, get another dynamic shot like I did earlier with the Joshua tree. Um, again, they're not moving, but I'm getting more shots just because I'm thinking through some things, especially being an engagement shoot, able to get a dope shot of the ring. I think this was my favorite shot of the ring uh, for this shoot, actually. And also just keeping in mind, if you're doing an engagement session, just try as many creative ways as you can to get shots of the ring. Also be open to all the pictures you take. You know, sometimes the pictures you take are imperfect and I think sometimes imperfect pictures come out to be awesome. Um, the, these ones you can see that the bushes were caught in focus and they got, you know, out of focus. But I think because the time of day or the, the, the location I was using, um, it came out to be really awesome pictures and so totally usable. Two things in general as a photographer is there's so much um, attention to detail that you need to have uh, before you even take an image. Just make sure the shirts are straight uh, make sure you know peep the, your subjects look comfortable. If they're ever if they ever look uncomfortable, chances are the image is gonna show that, and um, it never makes for a good image. Especially when they see that back, they're like, "Dang, I look weird because I'm uncomfortable." So always just let them find that comfortable position. If you pose them, let them find that comfortable position. It's it uh it'll make the picture look way more natural than you know contrived poses. So the underlining theme is that your clients most likely trust you to um, fix them as much as you need them to in order to get the right shot. And I think I used this, literally this pose and placement for about five minutes and I just got a ton of different photos. Um, you know, once you really find like the best lighting in your uh, shoot, just use that as much as you can, even if you have to switch them up. But like this image isn't a shot I always get but I just thought it came out so cool. This is just them off to the side and another one that where yeah, there, there's so much other kit. detail than just them, something that you can put in your uh, house. Types of shots, same location. Now I'm gonna reference my phone for a pose and let's hit up, great. So here's the pose. No shame in the game. Legit, I think this is something I'll do for the end of time and that is like pull out my phones and show the couple or even reference for myself but sometimes I show the couple if I can't put the words I you know like a lot of the photographers I've been around or seen is uh, trying to communicate the pose and it's like you're just taking so much time trying to communicate it while they're rather than just show them the pose you literally like 
and then get in the position and then shoot away. Uh, no, just look straight ahead. Also, another tip is if your couple is the same height, um, you know, if for the guy and the girl, you know, you can use a slope and, you know, so he can get some leverage. And so in some images, at least he can come off a little bit taller. Me too, as well. I'm almost the same height as my wife. Um, however, you know, I'll try to either tippy toe. No, I'm just kidding. All right, this is one of my opinions. Take it for what it's worth. But when you're doing an engagement session, uh, do your best to just get a ton of shots of the female's face. I think uh, with, with the two people you're shooting, even though it's an even number, the primary subject is the female. She should outdo her uh, fiance in shots uh, when it comes to an engagement shoot. So get the ring, get the face, get it all, man. There you go, like that. But you're good, you're good with. There you go. Like I got your back, girl. I stay ready. All right, you guys, yeah, do that look at each other thing. By far, one of my favorite practices while shooting, uh, especially in the same spot, is perspective. You can get such different images if you're shooting up at a subject, if you're shooting straight on at a subject, and if you're shooting down at a subject. The background will always change. It's a, it's actually a crazy thing. Like um, you can get the floor as the background, you can get the landscape as the background, or you can get the sky as the background. And so, as you can see, I'm going down, up, down, up. Um, and check it, the photos um, look different. And you know, switching the camera from portrait to landscape, you get so many different options from the same spot. Cool. All right, let's hit the mountains. Do you know it gets bad up there? So there you have it, part one of how to shoot an engagement couple. If you're on your way to a shoot or if you plan on doing more of these types of shoots, I hope this helped. Uh, by the way, I have a question, like have you ever done this in one of your shoots? Is just on your way to a location that they really wanted, you found a spot and you're like, let's hit this spot up real quick. 15, 20 minutes can, can pose a lot of images and that can just bless the couple. Even if it was like tagged on top of the time or that was a part of the time, I think they would be happy because of the diversity of images they're gonna get when you send them over those awesome images, right? Also, if you have any tips for me or things that you, maybe you would have done, uh, I'd like to know in the comments. Let's start a conversation. But other than that, if you found some value in this video, could you hit that like button, please? And also, if you wanna subscribe, I'll be posting part two of this photo shoot where we hit up the mountains and get uh, some serious images pretty soon. So uh, make sure to look out for that and hit that bell to make, be sure you're notified when the next video posts. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me in this. Uh, I, this these videos take a lot of work, and but I really enjoy the uh, outcome and how much it helps other people. So if you have any ideas on your end too, hit me up. Hit it up in the comment section. Follow me on Instagram. Do what you gotta do, and I'll see you. Bye. Peace.